Look at that shirt. Come on. That's pretty funny. Hi, I'm Guy Hutchinson. This is Pointless Nostalgia. I'm glad you're here. We're looking at Disney stuff. This is my shirt where I put the uh, old CEO amongst the villains because nobody liked him. It was perfect. It made people laugh. Then they threw him out. And I don't know what he's doing now. So it's not as funny anymore. Uh, today, we are talking about some Disney books. I'm very excited to show these to you. These books uh, are great. This is the Disney Treasures. And I'm going to show you the other one that we're going to be looking at. It's called the Disney Keepsakes. They're like companion books. They came out quite a few years ago. We'll get into the date they came out. They are super cheap on eBay. I looked them up and I thought maybe they're super valuable now. But they're not. They're like 10, 10 15 bucks, 20 bucks. You could definitely get, a, get one for 20 bucks. I'll put them up on the screen here so you can see. I'm not lying to you. You can get these for like 20 bucks. By the end of this video, I bet you a lot of you are going to say, hey, I'm going to go order that. These are some of my favorite books. Now, I have other books that are like this. You probably have seen one like this. I'm going to show you just real quick what it's like, and then we'll dig deep into these. But these books, you open them up to like just about any page, and there's these enclosures that then have replicas of real things from Disney history. Now, the other books I have have other topics. Like I have an I Love Lucy one with all kinds of Lucille Ball memorabilia. I have one with uh, Spider-Man stuff, one with stuff from the Kentucky Derby. They're great, but look at this. It's like handwritten props. I've heard people call these a museum in a box. They're, they're obviously, this is a replica, obviously, but it's so cool to be able to see this, to see like tickets from the Kentucky Derby and things like that. So I have a lot of these types of books. I pulled out these two Disney ones just to show you so you can get a kick out of what's in there if you don't want them. If you want them, go on eBay, find one. I'm not selling mine, but you can go find somebody else's. There's some out there and they're super cheap and they're super cool. Let's take a look. All right, here's the first one. This is by Robert Tymon. He did all the words in there. I like the words in it, but the reason I got it is not for the words. These came out, this one came out in 2003. It comes in this thing, it slides out of here. And there's your book. And this, the original price on this was $60. So I paid $60 for it. I think it was a good deal at $60. So I'm stunned to see these aren't haven't gone up in value. They've gone down in value. And uh, it's time for you guys to cash in on that. All right. Here we've got an audio CD. So if you have an audio CD player, you can check that out. I don't think I've ever checked that out, but it's probably pretty neat. Probably has some good stuff in there. Uh, so as we scroll through, we've got stories about Walt. And then look at this stuff. So this is artwork that Walt Disney did. It says 17, so I guess 1917. I mean, he was born in 1901, so he would have been a very young, uh, young child. What is this? Dear Mother. So did he not draw this? No, he's got his name there. Let's see what it says here. It's written to uh, Mrs. Disney in St. Louis, Missouri. It says, Dear Mother, everything is going well here. I got 100 in my grammar today. Uh, love, Walter. Huh. Well, there you go. A little postcard. Then there's this reprint of this little book. It says, My Golden School Days. Now, they tell you on each page here. They'll say right here, like, enclosures, and it'll tell you what they are. So it says, Golden School Days book, excerpt here, owned by Ruth Disney, includes early pen and ink drawings by her older brother, Walt. A photograph of the artist and one of the earliest known signatures. Walt sent this enclosed postcard to his mother, Flora, while she was in St. Louis, and he was boasting about his success on an exam with a clever drawing on the front. So it's like the guy's, uh, what's going on here? What's the clever drawing? Let's figure this out. Because now I'm looking at it. I think this guy's peeing on the thermometer, isn't he? He's peeing on it to heat it up. Is that what's going on? I don't know what's going on. All right. My golden school days. So it said this had early Walt Disney drawings that her brother had done. So this was Walt's sister. This picture of him there. It said he had done the drawing. So look at that. That is great. All right, skipping ahead to the end of 1932. Four short years, a short four years after Steamboat Willie appeared. All right, let's see what uh, what's going on here. Mickey Mouse. We've got him in some kind of uh, comic strip here. And this is like printed on newsprint, this one. Mickey Mouse, and he says here, oh, I guess it's just another way of starting the day. What's the other way of starting the day, Mick? 
Yippee ki yay! He's got a bomb in his mouth. Is this a new Die Hard? It's the new Die Hard with Mickey Mouse. Now that Disney owns everything, I think they do own Die Hard. Moore's Mickey Mouse magazine. A reprint of this. You got Horace Horse Collar, I believe. There. Look, there's the famous Eiffel Tower. I say it's an Eiffel. I went to France one time on a cruise ship, and it was fun. I went to Disneyland Paris, had a good time. Uh, but I never went to the Eiffel Tower, and it was one of those things where you'd see it behind buildings as you walked around, and I kept saying, oh, we'll have to go there. We'll have to go there and get a picture. And then I came back home, and I was like, oh, my God, I never took a picture. And I was, there were so many times where I could have been like, let me get a picture with the top half of it behind this building. Uh, I did dig through my pictures, found one where you could see just the little tiny top of it, but you could see it. And that's my Eiffel Tower picture. But I even bought like a souvenir Eiffel Tower. It didn't go over there. I don't know what I was doing. Now look at how cool this is. So the Snow White game, compliments of the tech toothbrush, and they reprinted it here for you with all the stuff so you could get your playing pieces. Look at this, the Snow White and the Seven Dwarves tech toothbrush game. You'd go start here, you'd go back to start. Doc approves, you go three spaces. This is bashful. Go to Sneezy. The Wicked Queen learns where you are or where Snow White is. Wait two turns. And then at the end, you get to smooch. You get to brush your teeth. Keep your white teeth Snow White. But they got to get their ad in there. This is great, though. Look at this. This is fantastic. So they reprinted this game. You've got the castle there. Happy says, go on three. This is a letter from the military, and it says that they wanted a, a drawing somewhat like this. They said, this is our idea for a drawing. Is there any way we could get one? They got the TNT there. And then there's the finished sketch. This is the Disney artist finished sketch. So you've got this uh, little uh, like goldfish there with the TNT. He's riding on top of that seahorse. Also, you got this. Planes need gasoline. It's a poster. Share your car for your country. Look at that. Pick up hitchhikers. That was the message Disney wanted to impart to people. Pick up hitchhikers. Even if they've got a lug wrench. Even if they're holding a wrench and have a bloody towel in their back pocket. This is wonderful. Look at this. This is a reprint of the animated cell. So they've actually taken the animated cell. Normally, this side would be the painted part. So they, you know, you can see what it looked like. And then this is the front that you would see in the screen. And then here you can see is her casting the spell. So it's on two different sheets. And when they're put together, that's what, that would be one 25th or 15th of a frame. Yeah, I think 25. I think it's 25 frames per second. Uh, but that's really cool. Like a replica of the animated cell right here in the book. It's kind of cool to see, especially if you've never owned one of these. All right, this is all about trains all aboard. It says that on his backyard train, this was uh, Walt's backyard train, he would give you this and this. Now, this is the stuff I really love. Look at this. So you got this Disney map, and it's a nice reprinted map. The real one was much bigger, but it's a cool reprint. You've got the Disneyland news about opening day with the California governor's Massage, he got a massage when he was there. Uh, let's see, Congress was informed about the Magic Kingdom. Did you hear there's a Magic Kingdom? Uh, and then they got these reprints of tickets. So this is a reprint of the original ticket. They actually went to the trouble. They, they went to the trouble to put that this is a reprint on the back. They want to make sure you know facsimile, not the original ticket, but this is a Disneyland ticket, a, a carousel ticket, a Dumbo ticket. I mean, that is pretty cool. Pretty cool to have little copies of these. The Haley Mills in That Darn Cat Cutout Doll and Wardrobe. And this is a reprint of the, uh, of the one you'd get in the store. Babes in Toyland. It's just great. Lots of great stuff. All right, let's move to number two. All right, here it is, book two. Same author. This uh, The first one was apparently a hit, which is probably why it is uh, so commonplace that they can sell it so cheap. 2005, and we just see, by looking at this, some things that make me excited. I see Muppets here, Bugs Life, 101 Dalmatians, so a lot of... Uh, a lot of stuff I want to check out. This is about uh, 3D animation. I remember they used to show this in the Magic Kingdom 
where Philhar Magic is now. And they also would show this, to Whistle, Plunk, and Boom. And they would show a movie called Magic Journeys. But this has 3D glasses. And they have some 3D artwork here. Look at this. Donald Duck, Witch Hazel in 3D. It's pretty cool. Yeah, this one, this is uh, Donald Duck, Timber Trouble. These are kind of neat. You could, uh, you could display these. You know, it's kind of kind of wacky, neat thing to have. Here's a Disney holiday card from 1949, which would advertise the upcoming pictures. Here's one about Disneyland, this section on Disneyland, which has this handwritten artwork. Look at that. It's Walt. Here you leave today and visit the world of fantasy. Yesterday, tomorrow, and then he put fantasy. Cross it out, put it at the bottom. The thing is with Disney stuff, because Disney's such a big company, like this would never, the public would never get to own this, right? There'd never be even a billionaire that could purchase it because the company owns it. So to have a copy of this with Walt's handwriting, you know, on a paper, it's pretty cool to see. Well, that'll bring this one to a close. Hope you enjoyed looking at this. I, I hope I'm not plugging too hard that you can get these used, but they're great. I mean, if you see them, pick them up. They're a lot of fun. Uh, right now, box is going to pop up here, box over there, and you can choose either one, and I'll see you tomorrow when we're going to look at some Disney ephemera, which I love. It's my favorite thing in the world. So we're going to see some Disney ephemera, some other stuff. But right now, you got to choose a box, and I'll see you tomorrow at 2 o'clock.